Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Al Faisal Whiteboard. We're back with a new biochemistry video this week titled Biochemistry the Big Picture. This video is intended to define biochemistry and through defining it provide an overview of the contents and sequence that is to be followed in our future videos. Okay, so let's start. What is biochemistry? I've already hinted towards the definition by dividing the word into two parts. So let's start with bio. Bio means life. But life sounds more of a philosophical answer, so how about we come up with something more scientific? If you recall, in high school chemistry course, there was a specific section defined as the chemistry of life. This section was titled Organic Chemistry, and it is oriented mainly around two elements, and those were the carbon and the hydrogen. Those carbon and hydrogen were either arranged in chains or rings, and in order to become more specialized, they were attached to groups made up of oxygen or nitrogen or phosphate. An example of oxygen would be something like aldehyde group, uh, carbonyl group, carboxyl group, amino group for nitrogen, and so on. Those elements gather together in specific combinations to form the molecules of life. The molecules of life are the following. They are proteins and their building blocks amino acids, lipids and their building blocks fatty acids, carbs and their building blocks monosaccharides. Hmm. So if I get a hamburger, would I call it a life? Because based on this definition, this definitely exists in the hamburger and this exists and in loads of amounts. And this does exist over here too. But well, no. At least let's agree on the fact that food makes us alive. What more can you think of that is in the diet but is not mentioned in this list? If you're thinking vitamins, then you are absolutely right. Additionally, minerals such as potassium, sodium, and other electrolytes are under minerals. As for H2O, it's there in the water, and gases, they are not exactly in our diet, but they are inhaled in air. So if we get to recap this, we can say whatever that enters our body makes us alive, either eaten or breathed in. Those are known as macronutrients, while those are known as micronutrients. The way that those molecules make us alive is either by forming structural molecules or functional molecules. And just to give you further insight uh, on this, I will show you an example under each group. For amino acids and proteins, functional would be something like enzymes, which is, pres which is present almost everywhere in our body, hormones, receptors, and so on. I wouldn't go into details of whatever that is listed here, but it will be it will come in details in the future videos. While fatty acids, these, these are examples for fatty acids and lipids. These are examples for monosaccharides and carbs. And I would like to comment a certain specific thing here that I've only f mentioned functional under monosaccharides and carbs. And the reason is that mainly what comes from carbs is used for functional purposes specifically and mainly metabolism. Doesn't mean that it doesn't form structural, but it's mainly functional. Additionally, there are a combination of more than one molecule together, and a typical example would be proteoglycans or glycoproteins. Another thing that I would like to mention is that proteins form the majority of both structural and functional molecules in our body. Now let's move on to chemistry. Chemistry means interaction. An interaction in our body is resembled under one main word, which is the metabolism. Metabolism is defined as a series of reactions that maintain life. And what happens is that once we eat, those molecules form functional molecules. And those functional molecules work to send signals for our body to produce energy. And once our body produces energy, it 
allows us to grow and build new cells or break and renew the old cells. So we're finally mentioning cells. Yes, this is the true definition of life and not a hamburger. <laughs> Cell is a simple answer for the definition of bio and life. But the trick here is this chemistry part. part. Once you say biochemistry, you can't just say that bio means cell. No, it has to do with getting those molecules to go into the signaling pathways and go into this all long series of, I can assure you, complicated reactions to form the cell. And once the cell is old, it breaks down and recycles back to those molecules. And truly, this is what all biochemistry is about. Now, whatever that has been mentioned throughout uh, the cycle that we have been mentioning over here will be covered in details in the upcoming videos. But I would rather not stop here because in the next video, we will t right away move on to those basics. The thing is that all those reactions, although they are targeted to build the cell, they also occur within the cell. So it is important to have an idea of what is in the cell, what kind of organelles, and what are the main functions, just at a brief level in order to keep up with the upcoming video. Here is a magnified image of the cell. I would like to start here in the nucleus with the chromosomes. The chromosomes are known to hold the genes and DNA and whatever char characteristics that uh, we are specialized for. But what I care from here about is that those three nucleotide bases that code for amino acids. The amino acids go into their endoplasmic reticulum and they get packaged in chains into proteins. Proteins then go to the Golgi in order to be modified in a way that suits the place that they are going to. What I mean by that is that once they are modified, they have the choice to either stay in the cytosol in the form of an enzyme or a receptor. They can go to the cell membrane and again they can form an enzyme or a receptor. Or they can even form channels, ion channels, for the minerals that I mentioned earlier to pass in and out. Or they have the choice to go outside, being the typical little example would be hormones. And those hormones would go to another cell, or even the same cell, and bind to a receptor and start the cell signaling pathway. Now that the signal has entered, it will tell the body to, as we mentioned earlier, produce energy. And this occurs in the mitochondrion. The mitochondrion takes up oxygen and utilizes somehow the carbohydrates to form the units of energy which are known as ATP. And now that the energy has been produced, we can start either building or breaking. Building of proteins occurs in the same way that we have mentioned. So for example, you have energy and now you want to build more proteins. This energy will enter here and will drive the protein production in the same sequence that we have mentioned. And structural proteins would be either within the cell for a cytoskeleton or outside the cell as extracellular matrix. The cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix function to hold things in place. Cytoskeleton from the inside gives the cell its shape, while the extracellular matrix, considering that we have many other cells that are organized in tissues and organs, it holds them in place, and more importantly, it it is the medium through which the signaling molecules are thrown between cells. Now moving on to the building of lipids, it occurs in this part which is known as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The lipids are important structurally for building mainly oral, all the membranes of whether cells or organelles in the body. So we are speaking about the cell membrane, uh, the membrane over here, the membrane over here, the membrane over here, and every possible membrane. And the point is, for as fat being hating water, and we have water all over the place, inside and outside, 70%. 
This creates a barrier in order not to allow anything very easily to enter or go out. It's sort of monitoring what's entering the cell or an organelle. Now moving on to the building of uh, carbohydrates. There's not much of building carbohydrates that occurs, but it can occur somewhere here in the cytosol or the extracellular matrix, but it's insignificant. It's more in the energy producing part. Finally, for the breaking part, this is the bus. Lysosome is a small sac that is known as the suicide sac, in which when the cell signals for breaking apart, this thing opens up, allowing all its enzymes to go out and eat up the whole thing. Just an additional important point to consider that we'll be targeting towards the end of our videos is the fact that the cells are specialized based on the organs and its functions that they are in. So whatever that I have mentioned over here applies to all cells, but if that cell has a specific function, the products will vary accordingly. So for example, we have the liver cell. Liver is the factory of energy in our body. It either stores for energy or produces energy. So what happens is that we mentioned that mitochondria are the main uh, organs for energy. The liver cell tends to have a lot of mitochondria in comparison to other cells. Another typical example would be the RBC. Actually, it's not typical, it's atypical. The RBC is for it to flow in the blood vessels, in that small blood vessels, it ends up being with absolutely no organelles. And we mentioned that we need organelles to produce energy. So keep that question mark in your mind. Just to recap, we have defined biochemistry and the basics behind this naming. Who are the role players that are involved, which are the micro and macromolecules? What is the stage in which those role players act? The cell. And the story behind biochemistry, which turns out to be a cycle of interconnected, simultaneous, and continuous pathways, which leads us to the reason by which uh, biochemistry doesn't seem to be a very pleasant subject to many students. Hopefully, we will be able to beat that in the future videos.